Remember, behind the scenes is TV 14 ish. So you'll definitely hear a naughty word or two. The world champions are Japan. China said qualifications is a prank and won silver. U.S. <laughs> won bronze to first team medal in nine years, you guys. Three compete, three scores count is no joke in the nerves division. We will count the number of gymnasts the events claimed in falls tonight. Um, it's October 3rd. And overall, the team scored 26 points lower than they did in qualification. Every single team had a fall, you guys. It was a great meet. Welcome mm. to Jim Kassik, the number one gymnastics podcast in the galaxy. I'm Jessica. I'm here with Spencer from the Balance Beam Situation. If you're a Club Gym Nerd member, make sure to switch to your members-only feed, which you can listen to from your favorite podcast player. You don't have to log into the website, but if you want to, you can watch along um, and see the faces that we make while we discuss this or join us live and ask questions live. So you can also, um, for members, you can go to the World's Headquarters um, page, the link at Gymcastic, and get every single podcast from World's. Um, all the, the data you need to be a super fan, all the videos are there, all that stuff. Um, okay, so let's talk about the medals first. Yes. Japan, gold medalists in the men's team final. Not a surprise based on qualification, based on the rosters that the team has brought here, but I think it's still, it's always surprising to me how few times Japan has won the world's team title for the men in recent years because they've been so good for so long. But this is still just their first team title since 2015 and only their second world team title since 1978. They just also have a couple of Olymp Olympic championships in there, like 2016 and 2004, but it doesn't happen nearly as often as you think it would have that this yeah. Japanese, this general generation, this broader era of Japanese men have won the team title because it usually ends up that they're really close and then China wins. And then that almost ha even happened again today, but it did not. <laughs> And I think part of this was like, Japan was like, Mwahaha, China is hosting Asian games. We shall send our A team and China will suffer. And that's basically what happened. They flew in Li Xiaopan, which I still say they did on a private jet or a um, or some kind of military stealth fighter in the middle of the night because he seems to have gotten here really fast and be perfectly fine for having come all the way from china <laughs> in the middle of the well, night to compete and replace came, someone at the last second lots of people came from asian games just a lot of them struggled in this competition because <laughs> they were really tired <laughs> yes. and they got here earlier than he did um yeah it's crazy because i mean for china to beat japan is a huge deal and i remember how it was japan in like beat china Japan beating China. I'm sorry. And um, I remember in 2015, like how Kohei like lost it in 2015. Like it's such a huge deal that they beat China mm -hmm. finally. Um, and they had a similar kind of like crazy celebration uh, tonight mm -hmm. when it was finally official. Like they're very stoked. Like you think Kazuma Kaya and his middle part hair is crazy during the meet? Wait until you see him when they actually win. That's when he's at his peak Kazuma Kaya ness. So, oh, that hair. I mean, He's, it's working for him, so why change it? That's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Yeah. We had a couple people who both came back from being in the alternate position last year on men's teams who are now on the teams this year. Kaya, Yul Moldauer, who were like intensely living their best lives during this final. Like They were like, remember that time I wasn't <laughs> on the team? I do, because it was like yesterday. I'm going to um, hit. Yes. Uh do um let's talk about the magical moment for japan which was minami um, minami's vault yeah everything minami has done because he is like the paulina schaefer jake air pirate um jarman this can't be real acrobat of men's gymnastics um and his vault was ridiculous He's the jake jarman of men's gymnastics is what you just <laughs> kind of said there um but yes fantastic his um cause cause double fall yep. is no it's cause two and a half right because he lands forward it was what i th he lands back facing the vault it was fantastic it was stuck it was super clean tim daggett almost lost it that there was a deduction to be found obviously <laughs> <laughs> did didn't he get oh it was jake jarman that got like a nine four and a 15 which was um, yeah, nuts. Minami got a 15. 
Yeah, and Manami got, got a 15 oh. 4 because he has which is, super what? extra difficulty. <laughs> yeah, which is just crazy. Um, yeah, and I think just like other magical moments for me with uh, with uh, Japan, we're just wait- watching um, Daiki, who's just always, he's just so good and so dependable, and you never worry. And he just looks so chill all the time. And then watching Kazumakaya, Kazumakaya, the entire competition, and just lose his mind constantly and look like he was going to like bite every apparatus before it started. Like he's just, Mm -hmm. he's so NCAA men's gymnastics. (laughs) That's what I think about him. He would fit in on the U.S. men's team. Definitely. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It was not a perfect day for China, for Japan by any means. Um, They started out uh, Chiba had a short landing on floor in that very first routine. And you were kind of like, what day is this going to be? And then he fell on pommel horse. So they were, you know, giving back some points, giving back some tents early on. But I think one of the themes was they didn't let that snowball and they kind of tightened up and they had, you know, things, a landing here, form things here. Not a lot of routines, I would say, for Japan were like their absolute perfect one, except for Minami's vault. But yeah. they didn't let, much like the US, who I'm, you know, we're going to talk about ad nauseum because <laughs> the US men won a team medal and it's a big deal for them. But they didn't let it like, become another huge error later in the competition they were you know tight enough did what they needed to do because japan was already that much better than everyone else in the competition and they were able to just kind of be normal sit on that and win gold less than two points it got kind of close but yeah japan did did. which is what we expected would happen yeah i mean china they did try to do their normal thing, which is, you know. Oh, they! I like, think they successfully did their normal thing. <laughs> they did. I think they get, they get credit for that deep fake of qualification because then they came back <laughs> and won silver, which is a huge deal with this roster. Like, I, that's that would have been, the for this Chinese roster in this competition, that would have been the goal compared to Japan. It would be like, let's go out there and get silver. And that's what they did. It helped to sub in Lin Chaopan because he came in and hit five routines, which was kind of the problem in qualification. But um, yeah, solid move. I asked Asher Hong if basically his strategy with podium training is he's just China strategizing it. And he laughed mm. and he was like, no, I don't mean to. But then he's like, it just doesn't matter. Like, it's just podium training. Like, you're just going to feel the equipment. And I was like, yeah, I think that's what China thinks too. That's why I asked if this is actually your strategy. But he was like, you know, it just doesn't matter in the end. Like, qualifications doesn't matter. It's like how you do in the end. Like, that's what really counts. And I was like, yeah, just like China. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, but uh, it was interesting talking about the U.S. men because I also talked to them, like, what have you learned from, like, you know, rotating with Japan? And, like, for those of you you guys that went to, like, uh, university games, like, what did you learn mm-hmm. from being in China and, and being there? Um, and it's interesting because they were just, like, uh, like, Fred talked about how, for him, it was just, like, don't change anything. Like, just stay exactly the same the whole time. And um, Brett was talking about how that French camp, remember that Brett talked about, like, the mm-hmm. whole team, the t- trip that the women didn't get to go on, but the men got on um, when they got to go to France and hang out and, like, really bonded. He was saying how he thought that, that really helped. And I was like, well, maybe. I was like, what about this? Um, Palma Horse Camp in France for the whole team. Um, and I <laughs> talked to Koi about that too. And he was like, oh, Palma Horse, because, you know, Koi had a fall for the US. But mm-hmm. so did China. Like every team had a fall. There were every single team. And China had two falls on one event and one routine. So I was just like, no, I don't. And he was like, oh, yeah, Palma Horse. Like, and I was like, no, I'm not saying like it's you. I mean, everyone. Like, this is the, like, there's always last year there was a fall on Palma Horse too when it was from the world champion. Like, um, so anyway, I just, feel like French pommel horse trip for everyone and then they can keep winning medals because clearly trips to France is the secret um and doing these I asked them like what about that photo shoot the U.S. did did you see the pictures of them they're all like in their fancy yeah. outfits walking around the tent like you know Belgium taking and I was like how about the photo shoot and they didn't know what I meant by the photo shoot like what do you mean and I was like when you guys were dressed nicely posed in front of <laughs> like we don't see you guys dress nicely ever <laughs> so this was a remarkable experience you were young men and you looked nicely put together this is remarkable and it has to be documented because it's so and rare like, and that's what they said 
<laughs> they were like, yeah, well, like, um, we don't always, like, we some wear things other than, you know, workout clothes. So we, like, you know, like to show off sometimes. I was like, this is great. Because, like, if I was a fashion magazine, I'd be like, U.S. men have the drip. There you go. Drip, by the way, means that you dress nicely. That is what wow. it means for the kids, in it case le- you didn't know. Or for the, the not kids. Show. Yes, you're welcome. Um, so anyway, I was very impressed with that. But back to China. Um, yeah. Dramatically, they decided, you know what this meat needs? It's going too well for us. Uh, we might win if we don't throw ourselves off high bar twice in a row. Dramatically, the se- and the first time uh, hit, um, who was it? Sun that fell Sue. off high bar? No. It was, How yeah. dare you, Sun Wei? Sue. <laughs> don't, Sue? Don't be smirched in the name of my Sun Wei, who <laughs> got what he, this medal that he deserved. <laughs> Sue fell twice on high bar. Um, the first time, I don't know if you could see, but he hit his head on the mat on that first fall. Hmm. And then he got back up, and then he dramatically um, flung off the bar, pinged, slid on the mat, partially removed his number from his back and then got up and hit the rest of his um of his routine because they didn't want to make it seem like you know it was going to be easy for them to win and then they had just duped everyone in prelims mm. so they had to create a little bit of they drama had sell, so, had to, they had to sell it is what you're saying yeah exactly <laughs> as is this uh, teaching everyone that we've moved past the need for like paper numbers on people's backs I mean, there's this actually is the no thing. need for this because you could just have a screen behind them with the competitor's number on it, which was more helpful, actually more helpful for everyone. And you could yes. have that screen up in podium training so that like everyone, all the media and photographers, for instance, know who everyone is in podium training, which we would appreciate a lot. Um, yes, exactly. <laughs> I think the thing for China, the other thing that I think is key is that they qualified in eighth place because we have now, we're developing a recent history of very successful last place qualifiers, eighth place qualifiers, because China's medaled here now. Canada women last year at Worlds, eighth place qualifier, bronze medal. Italian women 2019, eighth place qualifier, bronze medal. This is the key. Qualify in eighth yeah. place. Oh, you, yep. you want to win a medal? Qualify in eighth. This is the rule. Now we know. The eighth place, uh, which blesses you with a medal. <laughs> yes. Uh, so the U.S. won their first bronze since 2014. First medal yeah. of any color since 2014. The U.S. The U.S. Twitter, the USAG Twitter, then posted the comparison picture with the 2014 team, and we were all like, "No, oh, Jake Dalton, <laughs> come oh, back, Jake come back, Jake Dalton." <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it wasn't perfect. They had one fall, but like then they they just got better and better. Um, uh, Asher Hong did his Rise Guang. They had great mm-hmm. vaults. They went to high bar. The, everybody hit their high bar. Fred Richard was up last. And I was like, dude, you're really good on high bar. You're the national champion. Like, let's go. And he actually did it. And it was awesome. Um, I was just like, I was super impressed with them. Like, they just like didn't, because uh, they didn't let down after Palma Horse. They stayed exactly the same, which like you can tell, like, some, like Italy was just like, oh, it's gone. <laughs> Even though, let me just say something about Italy for a second. So Italy was basically just fully like the flaunting the leotard rules is what I would say they were doing. They there are had, no leotard rules for men. Exactly. They were like making a political statement about how men's bodies are not regulated at all and women's are by wearing a leotard that was cut. I mean, it was full down to the nipple. You could see their entire breastbone. Which I don't know if you know. You but mean they the, were wearing uh, correctly fitting <laughs> gymnastics? Yeah, clothing? like a singlet, yes. like the way it was in the seventies. Their shorts actually fit Italy, too. They don't. Italy look like was and shorts. Italy and Sun Wei were wearing correct gymnastics clothes. Everyone else looked like they were wearing hand me downs as usual that don't fit. Right, um, like the. Italian team, where are my rules? Where did you put my rules in the outline? I put the an outline section here called Jessica's doctoral, a- Jessica's doctoral essay on double standards and sexism in gymnastics, part 954. We just hadn't gotten to that yet. <laughs> <laughs> Italians pushing the leotard rules limit. So the FIG code for women, if you would, uh, the FIG on breast regulation. Spencer, please. 
Oh, okay. I've read this probably 934 times on the show. Um, the neckline of the front and the back of the leotard slash unitard must be proper. That is no further than half of the sternum and no further than the lower line of the shoulder blades. Leotard slash unitards may be worn with or without sleeves. Shoulder, slap, shoulder strap width must be minimum two centimeters. Meanwhile, the um, Italian men were like, Welcome to my 1970s, um, like, chest hair and my full sternum showing down to the xiphoid process. Basically, right now, what we're showing on the screen <laughs> is essentially a photo of what, if you could describe this, Spencer. Who is this? Is this a celebrity? <laughs> I just is this randomly, me? I Googled like, a hairy chest <laughs> t-shirt showing 70s, and this is the picture <laughs> that I got. Tiana wants to see. has um, posted a picture of a, a very deep V with a t-shirt. Looks fine. Yeah, which is, it just Looks goes great. to show that men can do whatever they want, including excessive celebration, and women cannot. But we'll get to this more later, um, because I want to talk about the U.S. a little bit more. My God, stop getting distracted by people's hairy chests. So, yeah. um, the U.S., I talk about so the US stoked for, for them. Yes, go ahead. Because I I say that because I completely disagree with your characterization of the U.S. men's performance. How dare you? Like, they struggle on Pommel Horse because they had one fall. And then um, also Fred Richard, who, of course, I watched that Pommel Horse routine. I was like, amazing routine from Fred Richard. And the judges were like, Spencer, you don't understand Pommel Horse. This is a zero. <laughs> and he missed his requirement or uh, didn't get credit for elements. And this is basically a fall. And I was Kensley like, well, did, amazing routine from Fred Richard. Kensley did point out that, like, I think she said he hasn't gotten credit for his scissors. Because uh, I listened to Kensley. Um, hasn't gotten credit for that, but he's done it, like, three meets in a row. So why is he still doing it? So she asked Brett about that in the mix zone. Mm. That video is coming. That happened. I thought they were kind of, like, they didn't throw in other major mistakes. But they were shakier through the next few events. And like Paul Judah like barely landed his Yurchenko double pike. That was kind of like he had to save that. And they lost a lot of tents. Like Asher hung on palm or on P bars and Fred Richard on P bars. And they were giving away like four tents, five tents for every routine. And it's kind of felt like to me through those rotations, it was like they're kind of falling apart. They're kind of losing it. They're just bleeding tents, bleeding tents, bleeding tents. But the big difference in this performance for the U.S. is like, yes, we can talk about how Russia wasn't here. That changed things. Great Britain had a really terrible day. That was very significant for the U.S. winning a bronze. The door was open for them. Like several doors, like a garage door was opened wide for the U.S. men. But they have had that door open for them before in recent years, and they were not able to walk through it. And the, the difference did. for them today is that they actually were able to walk through it and that they went to then high bar their worst event in the final rotation, knowing that they had to hit because they were ahead of great Britain at that point. But if both the U S and great Britain had got their qualification scores in their final events, great Britain would have had bronze and the U S would have been fourth if they had repeated those performances because the U S was not strong on high bar and qualification, they had to hit. And then they came up and hit three routines on high bar. That was the big difference for me. It was not that it looked great as a performance. I don't think this looked great. I don't think they'll, like, picking out individual routines, you have, like, maybe three that you're really happy with for the U.S. men. Like, if you're just watching that routine. But they didn't go to pieces, basically. Yeah. And that's a big deal. They didn't go it to is. pieces at the end. Right. Um, did you have a favorite moment? Um... Okay, well, I won't say this is a favorite moment, but I think it's an indicative moment, which is the introductions, which we got to see for the team final. They did a whole thing. Yeah, they did. They did an amazing uh, introduction. And they said basically Koi is always doing like Whip It and Nene. And so they basically were like, they were nervous about what to do. So they're like, we were just like, Koi, just do your thing. And we all stand behind you. So one day we did the Whip It and the next day we all did Nene. And that was, that was so good. They, I mean, they weren't the Mexican women level, but they did a great well, job and it was very entertaining and they had fun. We have lower standards for the men. But they <laughs> was like, this group maybe is like embracing their status as yes. performers professional performance or not professional if you're still a college amateur but you know what i mean professional performers which they are that's what you do 
this is your job is performing in front of a crowd and it's like oh this group might not hate that as a concept like yes. other years might have have hate that hated that as a concept yep um i agree with that and also um i want to tell you that you're continuing on that path i appreciated that asher hong got this by um, after his we say we say guang he basically was so happy he chasseed all the way down to the end of the runway high-fived kazumakaya and then or manami and then um got off the podium so like this is what i'm saying they're super into this but i have to tell you about the craziest freaking thing that happened which is yesterday um there okay but before we get to this this is where we say goodbye to some and we continue the conversation for our club gym nerd members remember that we're giving away an entire commissioned episode which you cannot buy anymore so as long as you're an active member in october we are going to randomly give away um an entire commissioned episode so make sure that you have that log in check your membership it's most you cannot get anything at starbucks for as little as this cost um and we'll be back tomorrow with the women's team final so listen to what happened spencer okay tell me there I'm was ready. a bunch of little kids in the arena yesterday like they do you know they bring in little kids when they can't fill the stance but the little kids were totally out of control 